Well, hey there, everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make these adorable puppy dogs with candy. And this is a trending item right now where you use half ornament plastic balls and you create some sort of character or animal or something around it um, and fill it with candy. So I thought this would be a great craft to do. And since I absolutely love pets and I love puppies, I wanted to design some um, puppy dogs. And so I have a lab, I have a terrier, I have a Frenchie, and I also have a Pomeranian. So you can see the terrier here and then this is the lab which you could do in chocolate or in um, a traditional golden color. Um, so what you're going to need for this project is you will need a Cricut machine for this. You'll need a Cricut mat, either the light grip or a standard green grip. You're going to need some cardstock. I recommend like a heavyweight or a 65 pound medium weight cardstock would be best. Just get it in your choice colors for your particular style, what dog you're doing here. And you'll also want to have some form of liquid glue. I use Tombow liquid glue. You'll want to have some foam tape and foam tabs. And then you'll need these um, half plastic ornament balls. You can get these online on Amazon. You can get them at craft stores certain times of the year um, and you can buy them in bulk. So I am using one here that is eight centimeters wide. So it's just over three inches in width. And um, that is what I'm referencing here for the size of this project. I feel it's a good size to where it's not too big. It's not too small. It holds between, depending on the candy that you're using, it holds between four and six or seven pieces of candy, somewhere in there. So for this particular design, when you flip it over, I have added perforation here to the back. And I'm going to show you how to set that up in design space so that your recipient can easily tear this open without completely destroying the entire puppy dog or project in general. Of course, you'll also need some candies to fill these up with, and that's it. So let's go ahead and get started with this craft. So the first thing we need to do is set up our files. And if you're following any of my other uh, candy ornament animals or creations, the process is all going to be very similar. Um, so I've already imported these and set them up. So I'm going to actually get this off my screen and show you from the start. So I'm just going to click and drag, group those, and hide them over here. And you'll want to upload the SVG file if you're planning on doing this um, layered. So I'm just going to browse my computer here and I'm going to upload the file. Okay, so here's the SVG file that I'm bringing in here. I'm going to click Upload. And I'm going to click on that under Recent Uploads and click Add to Canvas. And here is our file. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to ungroup this. So this circle here you do not need to cut out. It is for the purpose of making sure that you can size this little puppy dog or whatever it might be that you're using here um, appropriately for your particular plastic ornament half. So my ornament half is just over three inches. So I need to scale this entire thing as a group until this circle becomes close to three inches or just a tad over. So I'm going to click and drag. You always want to scale as a group, otherwise you're going to change the proportions and it's not going to come together accurately. So you want to make sure you click and drag over everything and scale it up, click off. Let's see, it's just over three inches here, so that looks good. So this circle here is the same size as the inner circle of this here, where the size will need to match for the ornament half that we're putting in there. So you don't need to cut this out, it's there for size reference for you. So I'm just gonna hide that once we have our size. Now the second thing we wanna do here, let me zoom in a little. The second thing we wanna do here, and technically this is optional, so if you do not have um, the quick swap tools with the perforation blade, you don't have to go through this step. Um, you could even use, you could even do scoring and that would probably make it easier as well for your recipient to open this. So this piece right here is meant to be changed to a perforation line so that your recipient can open it from the back and access the candy without actually ripping apart the entire design. So I'm going to go up to operation with this piece selected and I'm going to change it to perforation. Again, you don't technically have to do this part. Um, if you don't have a maker or a machine that works with perforation, you could probably still do score and that would make it at least a little easier for them to punch their fingers through and get to the back. Um, but I'm going to do perforation so they can cleanly tear it. <clears throat> the next thing we need to do is attach this perforation to the base layer. So over here in our layers panel, I'm gonna look 
for the solid base layer, which is this one. I'm going to select that and then I'm going to also select the perforation here. And you can select those two items only by holding your shift key on your keyboard and then clicking. And I have just those two items selected. So now that those two items are selected, I'm going to use the attach tool down here in the layers panel so that that perforation is going to be perforated exactly as it is shown here on my screen. And it may jump this entire thing forward and all you'll need to do is just click the arrange tool and send it to the back to get it back to the way it was. It's a good idea to save your project, so you can name it, save as, I've already got that saved, so I'm just gonna update it so that it stays saved. And now we can go ahead and cut this out. Our machine is going to break this up by color. If you wanna change colors, of course, you could click on these pieces and you could change the colors up here. Um, you could also color sync, so if you wanna consolidate some colors, you could click and drag to consolidate some of these colors here as well. That's completely optional. In fact, I'm gonna consolidate, consolidate this little nose to the black eyes, picking it up as a different color for some reason, but there's no reason that can't get cut out together. So that was an example there. All right, let's go ahead and cut this out. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and load this up here and get this cut out on my machine. Like I said before, you can get these templates um, on members.advocacyandcollections.com. There is all those details below in the video description for you. So I'm going to go ahead and load my mat here, and we're just going to cut out each one of these pieces as Cricut is presenting them to us in Design Space, and you'll do them in your corresponding colors. Alright, so I'm going to assemble the little golden retriever here, the lab, and um, the first thing you need to do is you need to get your two biggest base pieces here, and then we're going to be putting the candy in our plastic ornament half ball. Now remember, mine's just over three inches, yours might vary. I don't recommend going much smaller than this, um, just because the details will get a little bit cumbersome to work with, and if you go bigger, then it'll be even easier. Um, and you can buy these like on Amazon and stuff like that. I have resources for you below. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to flip this. Looks like I still have a tag on it here. I'm going to flip this and I'm going to go ahead and add a bunch of this foam tab tape. You can just do direct glue as well. So that's an option for you. You don't necessarily have to have the foam tab. Um, that's just what I'm using here. So I'm just kind of randomly sticking these here there's no science to it i'm just making sure that anywhere that i place these is going to um, make sure the design is supported evenly and that's all there really is to that <clears throat> now i'm going to use a weeding tool here to remove the backs of all these little sticky tabs here it helps the process go a lot faster You want to make sure around the opening here that you have enough sticky tabs because you don't want your design popping apart because of the weight of the candy or anything like that. So you might want to be a little extra generous around this area. Okay, so I have my plastic ball here and I'm going to grab some candy now. I'm just going to be using some Hershey Kisses. So just put however many in comfortably fits usually between, depending on the size of your candy, four to six on average, maybe a little more. And just set that down so it's all tucked underneath there. And then you're gonna grab this piece and lay it right down on top of it. You wanna pay attention that you're lining your layers up as you place this down. Okay, and then you want to press it. Okay, there we go. And now we need just to add on all of the details. And this is really up to you whether or not you want to do um, just straight glue or you want to add more of those 3D foam tabs to make it pop. I usually add a few. Uh, let's see, four. I'm not going to add any, I don't think, between these two layers. I'm just going to do straight up glue. 
to make sure your layers are aligned. So I'm going to do straight up glue on these two layers. And again, this is really up to your interpretation. You really don't have to follow me exactly. If you would like to, you can. So I'm going to do just glue on those. And then I'll take this whole piece and add some of these foam tabs onto it. And then I'm going to flip this piece and get it lined up here. Okay, there we go. And this piece will be next. And again, I don't think I want to do 3D foam tape on this piece. I'm going to do glue. So it's really what you prefer for the way you want, like how much dimension you want to your piece. Um, so I usually kind of balance out the tape and the glue. I have a golden at home, so I absolutely love this project, and I love dogs in general, so um, absolutely love it. And then this is his little nose piece here, so I probably will add some foam tabs behind this one because I want that to kind of pop a little bit more. So I'm going to add on his little face here. I'm just going to opt for a little bit of glue on the nose and the mouth that right there okay and he has two little layers to his tongue some of the other dogs don't have tongues or they only have one layer um, they're gonna vary just a little bit but you can just layer those together and then place it in his little mouth there and the last step is to add his paws. So let's see, these two are the bottom paws and these two are the top. I am gonna use foam tabs on these. Place those on. We are all done with our doggy. He is so cute and I have a couple different breeds here and I may expand my collection over time. Essentially they are all built the same way. Um, the you know most mechanical part of it is just placing this ball between these two layers and that is consistent across all of the uh, puppy dogs. And now you can give this to your recipient and they can flip it over and they can peel this open. To get the candy inside and then because it's a nice perforation they could even just tuck it right back that way when they're done and they'll still be able to enjoy this cute little puppy dog even after they've eaten the candy i hope you guys like this craft tutorial and if you would like me to make some other um, dog breeds tell me what dog you have at home um, i think i'm going to work on a kitty cat as well for our cat lovers and i'll be expanding this collection you can get all of these templates below in the video description and i'll see you there bye for now